Afternoon highs were not 40. This was midnight. That's when we saw temperatures like that, and they just didn't last. It's been a cool down all day long. The record for the coldest high on this day in history was only 37 degrees. If it wasn't for midnight, we would have said it. With the cool down we see tonight, that'll give us a real good chance to get enough humidity in the air that we start to see some of that fog forming for us. And it'll take a little while. This isn't going to be midnight fog. This is early tomorrow morning. Starts to clear out though once we get past sunrise, but temperature. There's plenty of changes here. Throughout the morning, we were down in the 40s, the 50s, pretty steady, and then it just jumped right up all the way into the upper 70s and lower 80s. Side of the front, you find yourself. And if you're in the basin, we're looking at temperatures sitting in the 30s and 40s into the early afternoon hours. Down to the southwest, we're almost into the 80s. So a big, big difference. This front really packing a punch, and it looks like it's going to stall out somewhere between Odessa and Monahans. I think I've got something even better. Right here. I've got some pictures that'll show you exactly what this looked like in Midland as it approached. And here we go. We've got the dust storm coming in. There it goes. And then it's hard to see much of anything as that dust just buffeted the cities, moving through Odessa, moving through Midland, now moving through the rest of the basin. Today, yeah. not bad for the viewing of the solar eclipse. No, not too bad. And of course, that is the big story today the solar eclipse. And if you didn't get a chance to see it, well, we have our own. High tech uh -oh. recreation Here of the go. solar eclipse. Thanks. Brian, initiate it. <laughs> there you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's incredible. Okay, bring it on back. There you go. That, that was basically wow, the solar eclipse in a <laughs> nutshell. Uh, dark and then bright again. Push ups, which we've covered a little bit um, in the last few months. Yeah. So that gets a little bit of circulation to your upper body. You're excited about this one, John. He's ready. John, John's <laughs> a pro at push ups. All right, so we're going to come on to so hands and knees again. Hands out wide. So you oh, can do no. this on hands and knees, just really working through your upper body. Or if you John's want to look more show off. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> Dang it, John. Here's our own chief meteorologist, John Mayer, with his bracket on fire. He started strong, but entering today, he sits in sixth place in the office bracket challenge. It's not good, Pete. No, it's not. It's not I mean, I'm sorry. John just wanted to say hi. You're wearing a pair of uh, slippers because you had toe injury. <laughs> and if you had those on camera, yeah. no one would have heard a word you said because they're the most interesting. Can you bring one of those? Oh, sure, sure. Just, we can, uh, just real quick. It's because I'm still a child, and so I got my uh, Gengar uh, because I like Pokemon. Thanks, cool. Mom. That's cool. Chase Menendez, our morning meteorologist, and myself, we both went down to McCamey Middle School, got to talk to all of these wonderful young men and women, and... Uh, they were easily, I, I'm going to go ahead and say this, anybody that has had a talk from me before, I'm sorry. They were the best class that we've ever talked to. Ooh. They had great questions. Some of these storms are really starting to ramp up now, especially into Reagan County. That is where we see that severe thunderstorm warning right now. A lot of lightning issued with this storm, as well as some pretty sizable hail. How large is the hail getting? Well, up in the actual storm itself, upwards of three inches. So this is definitely uh, dropping some pretty large hailstones, and this is going to continue to make its way off towards the east as we move through the next hour or so. It's really just a matter of time before this is out of the viewing area entirely. But while it's here definitely packing a punch and we're really seeing this hail core developing in a pretty big way a lot of uplift and this is stretching all the way up to 50,000 plus feet that's why we're seeing hailstones as large as they are and why we've seen a lot of this activity not just right now but earlier in the day as well we've got a couple of hail reports from earlier on this afternoon Glasscock County picked up hail golf ball size the little over one and a half inches go a little outside of the viewing area all the way up to baseball sized hail nearly three inch diameter hail but that's the thing here the worst of the activity is staying off to the east a bit closer towards San Angelo and Abilene and that's where we see the tail end of that severe thunderstorm watch being issued off to the east but still covering a good portion of the basin and down into the southern Trans-Pecos we're not out of the woods just yet Now, your local two weather authority forecast with Chief Meteorologist John Mayer. He warns you first. All right, John, it sounds like a broken record. We could really <laughs> use some rain. Yeah. Fire weather. Boy, it would be nice if we had some changes on the way, right? Mm.
Do we? we actually do. Finally, this is the first time in about three weeks that I've been able to say we have rain chances moving back into the forecast. Uh, I'm getting a little ahead of ourselves, but it, it's certainly the headline of the day: the chance for rain finally coming back around. Spoiler alert: it's not today or tomorrow. That's why we still have the fire weather warning in effect for every single county in West Texas, southeastern New Mexico. This has become an old friend, but one we're looking to get rid of in any possible way. And of course, what leads to the fire weather warning? Dry, warm, and windy. And we definitely have all three, especially the dry air. Dew points down to the single digits if you're that lucky. Negative nine degrees in Wink, negative four there in Hobbs. A little bit better in the basin. 20 degree dew point here in Odessa Midland, but that's hardly humid in this forecast, but it's about the best we can do out there. However, what if we started to see a little bit of change? What if we could pull in some more moisture from the Gulf? We're seeing that already off to the east. Dew points into the 50s towards Austin, Corpus, Brownsville. Here's the next few days, though, and this is finally the change we've been waiting on. Tomorrow afternoon, it's still not looking too good. Elsewhere across the state, seeing a lot more of that green, a lot more moisture moving in, but for West Texas, still looking very dry. Why we have another fire weather warning for tomorrow, but by the time Wednesday comes around, a little bit of change starting to creep a bit closer. Del Rio, 61 degree dew point, way better than anything we're seeing today, so it's getting closer and closer to West Texas, and by Thursday, it's here. We get dew points into the 40s, the 50s. We actually get a dry line developing to our west. That is something we just haven't seen at all so far this year, and that'll give us our first chance for a little bit of rainfall. That dry line developing between El Paso, Culberson County, southeast New Mexico, right in the middle there, gives us a chance to see some storms into southeastern New Mexico towards the Davis Mountains for Thursday evening, and then Friday, this is a big time welcome change. We get the dry line into the basin, and that'll give us a chance for some storms along I-20 and finally a chance to see some rainfall in Odessa Midland. We haven't had any since the end of March and that's been three weeks now. So it's about time we start to see some more of those rain chances in the forecast and that's your day for it. Friday afternoon and evening, finally a chance to bring in some more rain. Of course, we can never get just the rain. This will also be a chance for some severe weather on the way. A good chance that we'll see some severe storms by the time Friday rolls around, but we'll take what we can get. Of course, for now, no such luck. Just a little bit of cloud cover off to the north, still staying pretty clear and dry out across most of the viewing area. Winds beginning to pick back up. Sunday was pretty calm, but now we're starting to see those winds up towards 15 to 20 to 25 miles per hour here in the basin, significantly higher off into the mountains, 37 miles per hour there in the Guadalupe Pass. And this is just the beginning. Next couple of days, more of those strong, strong winds on the way. And with how dry it is, once the winds pick back up by tomorrow afternoon, talking another chance for some of that blowing dust, especially off to the west where we see those stronger winds into the Guadalupe mountains and down towards the trans Pecos, a good chance that the dust comes back into the forecast before we start to calm back down. A little bit later on this week, those winds starting to subside, but for tomorrow, certainly going to be an issue. Already looking at that high wind warning for Eddy County down towards Culberson County. A little bit further east, we've got the wind advisory, Lee County, northern trans Pecos, and certainly have plenty more of this change on the way. The other big change out there today, a big warm-up. Temperatures going up by about 15 to 20 degrees here in the basin. In southeastern New Mexico, and that has us with highs back into the 90s, something we did not see this weekend. It was mild Saturday, Sunday, now starting to warm back up. Not exactly record setting temperatures, but also not too far off, hitting the big 9 0 here in Odessa Midland and seeing more of that heat on the way into tomorrow. We barely cool off into the overnight. Lows only dropping into the upper 50s, lower 60s. Warm start to your Tuesday, and then those afternoon highs back into the 90s again. 92 Andrews, Jal, 92. In Odessa Midland, mid 90s towards Barstow, Grand Falls, and into the northern Trans Pecos. But a little bit later on this week, we start to get that change arriving for us. Tuesday is our last big warm day in the forecast before we see the next cold front drops us from the 90s to the 70s. And there it is, Friday. Something I have not had on the seven day forecast in a long, long time. The thunderstorm chance is coming back around for us. Finally, get a chance to put a dent in some of that drought. But it's going to be rough out there tomorrow. Another fire weather warning, more strong winds, more dry air, but there is that hope on the way. Thursday, the chance for rain off to the west. Friday, the chance for rain here in the basin. Fingers crossed this pans out for us, but this does look like our best chance for rain that we've seen in a long time. Well, that's great news. Hopefully, yeah. we can pull a lot in. If we can keep this going, that'll be mm -hmm. for the best. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, John, thank you. Now for your local weather authority forecast with Chief Meteorologist John Mayer on Fox 24 News, first at 9.
Well, today was another one of those days where we see clear skies, plenty of sunshine, and a little bit of a warm up. Slowly seeing those temperatures creeping back up there. We've got a ways to go if we're going to try to top what we saw this weekend. How about the other big question? Can we pull in any rain chances? Well, not today and not exactly tomorrow. It's going to take a little while before we see some change, but once Thursday rolls around, start to get a cold front developing well off to the northwest. And as that starts to drop down, Finally, we actually see a chance for a couple of isolated storms. Now, isolated is going to be the key here, and chance, you can't emphasize that enough. Unfortunately, most of us will stay dry, but the eastern basin towards Borden, Howard, Glasscock, Reagan counties, and down into the southern Trans Pecos, Terrell County, there is a chance we can see some of that rainfall developing for us. It's all going to depend on the positioning of the dry line. That's really going to be the big factor. If it moves into West Texas, we get that chance for some rainfall. So, where's the dry? line right now. Well, it's definitely not here. Instead, we're just dry. We've got dew points down in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. If we look a little bit zoomed out, though, it's still not there. We're waiting on it. We've got to get a little bit more of that moisture moving in from the Gulf, and then we can start to see that fine line between the moisture off to the east and the dry air to the west. And if we see that line up over the basin, we get that chance for rainfall. So exactly where is it going to set up? Well, into tomorrow, things start to get a little bit muddy, but by the time Thursday rolls around, we do start to see that boundary forming into parts of West Texas through the basin, and that'll give us that chance to see a little bit of rainfall down the line Thursday into Friday. That's our best chance, and honestly, it's our only chance over the extended forecast if we're going to pull in any of that rainfall. Winds starting to calm down for us, but well, we still got a ways to go, and a good chance to see some more of those strong winds picking up as we move through the overnight into tomorrow. Looking at those 20 plus mile per hour winds down towards the Trans Pecos early tomorrow morning. Morning, and then we really start to pick up once Wednesday rolls around into Thursday. Still plenty more of those strong winds, but for now, warming up, and that trend set to continue. Temperatures in the 60s and 70s right now. Elsewhere across the state, a little bit cooler. Off to the east, we see some 50s there towards Dallas, and off into the far east, Shreveport sitting at 55 degrees. But for us, we're still holding on to a little bit of that warmer air, and certainly seeing a bit of a warm up compared to yesterday. Past 24 hours, temperatures jumping. By about 10 degrees, but now we start to make that turn. Overnight tonight, not cooling down very much at all. Mid 50s for most of us into tomorrow morning, and then the next warm up arrives. Warm enough that we're talking a return to fire weather. Tomorrow afternoon, we've got the fire weather warning in effect for southeastern New Mexico down towards the Davis Mountains. Fast forward Thursday and Friday, we get the fire weather watch already issued for absolutely every county in the viewing area. Still looking at more of the dry air, more of those strong winds, and more warm temperatures. Temperatures. Thursday is the big one. That's when we get that chance for record setting highs. So, just how hot will it get? We'll have a check on that seven day forecast next. Ooh, back into the 90s tomorrow. Back into the mid 90s on Thursday, 95 degrees, and a good chance to see our first triple digit highs down into the Trans Pecos, the southern border on Thursday afternoon. Then the big cool down, down 20 degrees from Thursday into Friday. That's the cold front and that chance for some isolated storms into the eastern basin. Saturday starts off like last weekend, cold out there, but thankfully, night as cold. We're not going to drop down to freezing temperatures, but still going to be plenty chilly out there and a big change from the 90s to the 60s to the 90s again. Yep. Here yeah. we go. <laughs> Here we go. Well, the good news is that at least the weekend is going to be yeah. uh, more spring like, a nice cool in the morning and, more and then consistent. comfortable. Yes. Yeah, we don't have to go from 30s to 90s in a single day like we had this past weekend. So you can dress one way and yep. kind of stick with it. At least not this time. Yeah. All right, John, thank you. Reporting live in Odessa, Tyler Wester, Fox 24 News, first at nine. Tyler, I just looked behind me because I would be terrified out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, still to come after 15 years.